This is a pretty neat story. I guess these two guys, Ant and Deck, are popular TV personalities from across the pond in the UK. They're TV presenters and hosts, Anthony McPartland and Declan Donnelly. Those are their full names. I had never heard of them before this. But I guess they're, they've also been on Britain's Got Talent, which would explain why I've never heard of them, because why the hell would I watch that? I don't like America's Got Talent. I don't think America has talent, but that's beside the point. They've been best friends since they were 13 years old. Well, they filmed a documentary that just aired on ITV. It took them three years to make this thing called Ant and Dec's DNA Journey. And, spoiler alert, the big reveal at the end is that they're actually related. They, they, they trace their bloodlines all the way back to the skeleton of a Viking. The Viking Raider Warrior Experience. Through their father's bloodlines. They think the Viking died somewhere around the year 790 AD. Ric Flair was only taking his first steps that year. So the payoff to this entire uh, documentary is that they find out they're distant cousins. Okay? Who gives a shit? Why am I bringing this up? Along the path of their DNA journey, they come to find out about another person that they are related to, or Declan is anyway. He got a DNA hit on his father's side. A four times great-grandfather, six generations ago, that he shares this DNA hit with Dixie Carter. Yes, that Dixie Carter, not designing women Dixie Carter. TNA Impact, Dixie Carter. I share a birthday with Dixie. This guy shares a great-grandfather with Dixie. So on the show, they arrange for a meeting in Ireland. And Dixie shows up to meet the both of them, and they're showing footage of her taking that big powerbomb bump off the top rope, the Bubba Bomb, through a table on Impact by Bubba Ray. And they ask, or Bully Ray, I guess. And they ask her about it, and she says that she broke her back for real on that bump, which is true. I mean, she wasn't in traction or anything like that, but she broke two small bones in her back on that bump, legit. And these guys kept talking about her like, she's a wrestler. Oh my god, you're related to a wrestler. Like, <laughs> I, I think they actually thought that she wrestled. And then later on became an executive or something later in life. Like in the annals of women's wrestling history, I don't recall Dixie Carter's name alongside names like Moolah and Mae Young and Mildred Burke. But maybe I need to brush up on my history. So Dixie said that she took the Ancestry DNA test and found that her DNA is 37% Irish. So she has Irish roots on both sides of her family for that number to be that high. She said that her father, Bob Carter, Panda Energy Bob, was adopted when he was three years old and her adopted grandparents could, couldn't have children. So every year around Christmas time, there was an orphanage, and, and they would take some kids in, and then I guess they would be adopted by somebody else. That's the basic gist of, of the story. But Ant and Deck were most interested in the fact that her family's energy company did $5 billion in revenue over the last few years. Or at least that's what Dixie claims. But it's, it's an energy company, so I don't doubt for a second that they made billions of dollars. But imagine finding out that you're related to a billionaire family. You are related to a billionaire. From TNA Impact to DNA Impact. I never thought I would see the day that I would be hoping for Dixie Carter to make her WWE debut. I was thinking about her recently uh, when I was thinking about EC3. And I, I never thought I would be sitting here thinking, man, you know, Dixie Carter should make her debut in WWE because it may be the only thing to save EC3's career at this point would be to bring her in you know, play off their history. I know that means they would have to play off an Impact storyline, which they probably are loath to want to do. Although they let them keep the EC3 name. They never bothered explaining on TV what EC3 even stands for. In all the years he's been there, it's just EC3. Three meaningless letters and numbers it just means nothing in WWE. But if wanted to, there's nothing stopping them from acknowledging the fact that he is related to this woman and explaining who she is and i don't know how they would even explain that they're not going to mention impact by name point is i actually think bringing in dixie carter is the only thing that will save ec3's career he he's basically a lost cause and mjf is now a better version of ec3 and aw i know that but dixie coming in to rescue her nephew's career 
could be entertaining, I think, with the right story.